Now it's time to begin our service. Welcome everyone. We need to get started so we can get out of here on time. Hopefully there'll be a few more drift in and we'll be people out camping and summer break and vacation. So uh, I'm glad you came this morning. Let's stand and open in prayer and invite the Lord's presence today and then we'll have some worship time together. So. Laura, would you pray this morning, please? Good to have a couple here this morning that's been here first time. Tanner and Georgia are here. They just moved to O'Neill area. Going to be working for a company here that does all the wind turbines. And so welcome them. And uh, good to have you with us today. So turn around and greet somebody. And uh, and the worship team's going to come and lead us in some songs. So. Jimmy and on drums. Good morning. We'll get started with worship and and uh, exalting the Lord. Good to see you on this morning. And I know a lot of people are missing. We've got a lot going on. And everybody's got different plans. So we're glad you're here and, and here to worship with us. And we serve a mighty God. Let's just worship him and praise him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve.
give you praise to him. Lord, we just thank you for being our rock, our fortress, our deliverer. You are a mighty God. You are our source of strength. He's my rock and he's my fortress. Amen. And he's my deliverer, my strength, and all that I need. Let's turn in the hymnal to 125 and sing, Bring Your Vessels, Not a Few. You know, the Lord wants to continue to bless us, and we just got to bring our expectations and our needs to him. And he wants to pour out his blessings to us and bless our hearts and our lives. Are you looking for the fullness of the blessing of the Lord? so many things. Let's just stand and sing this beautiful song about uh, Christ and what he's come to do for us and how much he is our strength in Christ alone. He is our home and our comforter. ground 
His body lay, light of the world by darkness laid, then bursting forth in glorious day, out from the grave He rose again, and as He stands, Amen. You may be seated. As we sing a song like that, Jesus is all I need, I know there's times when I think I'm doing pretty good without God's help. Maybe we can get by and we get so busy and we find uh, that uh, things don't go as well as when we involve him daily in our lives. So. We need him, don't we, every day. So praise the Lord. <coughs> well, thank the Lord for all the great rain that uh, came across the, <coughs> the uh, area here in Nebraska. And I don't know how much you, you guys got. <coughs> had a tickle in my throat. Um, but I think we got about 1,500s or something like that. And... Uh, some places got more than that. Dorothy usually gets more than that, but uh, <coughs> but I got really got a tickle. Anybody got a glass of water somewhere? So anyway, um, some places got more than a half an inch. Some places got uh, 
over six inches we were caught in Tilden. Thank you, Mick. We got caught coming back from North Fork last night in Tilden, pulled in for a safe area. The storm was so, it was raining so hard you couldn't see anything. Pulled in alongside of a building and a guy come up to the building and opened it up and he drove in and he came out and said, you got another door, come on in. This. And, and so we pulled in that side and that storm came and uh, they had over six inches by the time we left and it was still raining and they had uh, on Facebook, I just see they had guys on kayaks that were kayaking the streets of Tilden. So a lot of rain. I, I don't think we needed over six inches at one time. But anyway, he was uh, gracious to us, so allow us. He's a body shop guy, and he did take care of us and let us come on in. We got to visit with them. But uh, thank the Lord for the rain. It was just everywhere, uh, all over. The, the Christian Cross Festival got rained out, and everybody's kind of hoping that wouldn't happen. But... Sounds like they moved into a big church building and and uh, had the concerts anyway, right? So, all right. Anybody else have anything you'd like to sh uh, share this morning and praise the Lord about? Anybody? Yes, Ed? Okay, thank the Lord, uh, Ed and Laura and, and the family and, and uh, Mick and some others went up and they served hamburgers for the the uh, garage sale folks that are cruising around town and I think they served, what, over 100 hamburgers or so and uh, people came with a free will donation. So thank you guys, appreciate your doing that and reaching out to people, no cost, there was no, no deal on there where you got to pay two bucks for that, it was just something they do to help and to share the love of the Lord with people, so Thank you guys for, for doing that. Appreciate it. Anybody else have anything to praise the Lord about this week? Yes, Lonnie? I just thank everybody for the prayers of Carolyn and her Okay, thank the Lord. Uh, daughter Carolyn uh, was in an accident and rear-ended pretty, pretty hard, and but she's uh, doing better. And uh, thank the Lord, it was not worse and uh, able to be able to provide insurance for that. So, anybody else have a praise? Deb. Deb has a praise for Robert, her brother Robert, been doing a lot better. Uh, a couple, three weeks ago, when we were in Kearney, and they're calling his family in, and thought that was it for Robert, and uh, surprised everybody. The Lord raised him up, and he's doing so much better, and uh, been able to uh, communicate well and everything. So keep praying for his uh, healing, that he has some other physical needs. So how did camp go? Fantastic. Camp went well, Brianna. First week, right? And you got your family with you here? Yeah. Have they been here before? Been introduced before? Um, some of them have. So I've got my sister Christina, my mom, Stacy, cousin Allie, and then Jeremy and Jeremy's mom. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you, Sandy. Praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> Sand Sandy's son, Brent, has been uh, clean and sober and doing great. And what a blessing it is to her when that happens and uh, in his life also, his family. So, anybody else have anything you want to share? I don't want to leave anybody out. Bev? Okay. Okay. All right. Pray for Sandy Larvey. And she will she be in Hastings for the surgery? In, okay. And he has surgery this Friday. So also pray for Joel Hansen. Uh, he was injured this last week in a uh, strap, a bungee strap accident that came loose he jumped out real quick to you know he's hauling stuff and he pulled on it and it he popped loose and hit him in the eye uh, they thought that the eye was totally destroyed but he has been uh, he's home now and they're letting the eye heal up a little bit but he has bad scar on a bad cut in his uh, cheek and also the lens was driven back into the retina and uh, but he is saying that he can see light and they can see some color which is very positive for that type of energy. So pray for Joel. He's in a lot of pain. He's home now, and uh, this is a pretty big deal. We pray for a miracle that God would heal his eye, and they'll probably check him again this first of the week and decide when the eye settles down whether they can act, what kind of surgery it will take to restore his vision. So we just pray God will heal him and, and uh, that he'll be able to see again, so. All right. Yes, uh, Jace? All right, Jace said they made it home safe from Arizona. Had a good, this is a good trip, was it? All right, good to have you guys back. And uh, right now, um, your lives are a little bit uh, challenging right now. Uh, are you in your new home? Are you? So they're living at the camper. So, and the shed. <laughs> so we yeah, pray that things go well for them, and and they sold that house and they have to move out, and so they're they're out. Yeah. So they can't have real large crowds anymore for like big dinners and that <laughs> for a while. Anybody else have anything you want to share this morning? Anybody? Okay. All right. Keep praying for our church. And uh, the summer is always a big time to vacation and be on uh, trips doing different things. And so pray for safe travel for everyone. And... Uh, Come when you can, I guess. I don't know what else to say. Some people say, well, we'll be at the lake the next two weeks. And okay, you know, and, but uh, whenever you get a chance, come out. I know uh, there are a lot of activities going on. We just had uh, down in Norfolk, went to our granddaughter uh, Hannah's a softball, district softball tournament. And I want to tell you, there's about three, three days of intense uh, double elimination teams and uh, these people travel from all over and so everybody's busy I know and then Sunday morning rolls around and they got some more games Sunday morning and it's like uh, you know for me it's like what about church you know and don't forget about church my lands you know if you have to go somewhere go to church somewhere you know drop in at a church and visit wherever you're at and that'll be great so all right Ed did you have something Yeah, pray for all the kids that are heading out to camp this week. How many are going this week? Um, we've got seven girls and then three or four boys. So about 10, 10 or 11 children plus uh, who, who's working camp? Just, just you? Uh, Lindsay's working. Taylor's going. Four of them? Um, I don't know. Is. All right. So pray for safe travel down to camp, and then the kids are there. Have a great time, a fun time, plus spiritual part. God will speak to their hearts and, uh, and be able to help them make decisions in their life. So, all right. 
Anything else? Okay. Um, we got to go to announcements. All right, Joe, you got any announcements there? Sunday school, come on out and join us, you know. Coffee's on, it's fresh. Best coffee in town. So, all right, summer break time for the girls and boys. We're not doing anything there. We might try a boys uh, camp out or something a little bit later on, right? Maybe a fishing trip, maybe canoeing or something we're going to try. Camps are coming up uh, this week. Get your bags packed, leave in the morning, be at the church by 1030 with a packed lunch and a water bottle and uh, other clothes and stuff that you'll need. So that's uh, meeting at the church, right? And then youth camp is coming up, only four weeks away, July 10th through 14th. So uh, pray for that too. Other events have birthdays and anniversaries are Shelby Hansen, June 12th, Kathy Holbein, June 12th, Hannah Miller, June 15th, Tiny Dennis, he's up in Spencer, and uh, his birthday, June 15th, Roger Waldo, June 16th, and Ella Olendek, June 17th. Any anniversaries? Ty and Emily Rouse on June 14th. Happy anniversary. How many years? Nine years? That was a great wedding. I remember that. It was down in Burwell Park, and they had bales of hay all around, and it was pretty cool down there by the Burwell Park. And so, it's great. Nine years. Go fast, don't they? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have anybody who's going to sing this morning? Joel? All right. Joel Jr. will be singing. This song really uh, ministered to me, so I hope it ministers to you as well. Days are gonna make you stronger. You'll 
will find purpose in the pain Hold on just a little bit longer Deep down there's a well of faith Let hope arise as you lift it up my name And just hold on Oh At the end of the, of the road, a new life is ready to unfold. Hold on just a little bit longer, I know it's gonna be okay. These days are gonna make you stronger, you'll find purpose in the pain. Hold on just a little bit longer, deep down there's a Thank you, Joel. Sometimes, uh, you know, that song, uh, sometimes we just, all we can do is just hold on. Get through what, whatever you're going through. And sometimes people don't realize what we are going through. Sometimes uh, one of the hardest things is to be honest about what's happening in our lives. And we face a lot of them by ourselves and we don't realize that uh, we need help, that God can give us strength to make it through whatever you're going through today. Amen. And I pray that everything's going well for you, but if it isn't going well for you, that you will trust the Lord and he'll be there for you. He'll help you get through it, so amen. Well, this morning I'd like to share with you a scripture and uh, talk about the uh, title of it this morning will be The Power of Words. The Power of Words. We've been kind of sharing and studying about the Holy Spirit in our lives. And as you uh, have made a commitment to the Lord and he has come into your life and he is within you and empowers your life. We've been through a lot of different things of what he does while he's in us and how he strengthens us he forgives he brings us uh, to the lord for salvation the new birth has taken place because the holy spirit comes in and, and we're born again and then he helps us in our transformation for uh, becoming more like christ he takes the old man and transforms us into god's image by the presence of the holy spirit who uh, helps us understand what we need to change and as we start that process, we begin to be uh, sanctified or actually cleansed from our sins and sanctified, set apart for the service of God. And our, now we're, we're, we've been called to serve him. And, and part of that uh, serving him includes uh, his empowering us to do what he's called us to do. We have all the tools. We have everything needed that he empowers us with, and he said, let's go, do it, let's go do this together. And every one of us have that. As Christians, you have his presence within you. He's empowered you to serve him. I know we're distracted so much from the world. We talked about that. The distraction from the world system. We are not part of this world system. We are separate. We belong to the kingdom of God, and then we serve him within that kingdom. And that's such a powerful thing for us to be part of that. And I think that we get distracted at times when we think it's just all about me and the world and I'm just what I'm living here. But 
what has God called you? What has he gifted you with to be able to do? And whatever he's done, it's just, let's start, let's start doing this. And uh, then we talked about uh, all the nine gifts of the Spirit. We talked about the nine fruit of the Spirit, which is an amazing characteristics that we develop within us as Christians. And that process and the gifts of the Spirit are like uh, something we desire, and the fruit of the Spirit is something you have to pursue also. And that builds our character and makes us become uh, in the image of God as we allow those that characteristics of God to influence my life. It really doesn't matter to me if there's what other people want to be like. You know, that's your choice, whatever you want to be like. If you want to have envy, strife, you want to have mistrust, you want to have anger, you want to, if that's your choice. But you and I as Christians have a choice to live uh, and walk in the spirit and allow his character to shape my life. Everybody goes, well, everybody else is doing, I mean, everybody else out there is all doing this stuff. It don't matter. Amen. In this world today, we sure need people who are walking in, in the spirit and allow the spirit of God not only to empower them, but to help them become in the image of Christ. My desire was to be like him in all the things I do. And that's tough in a world today that's very revengeful, very hateful, very mistrusting. It's tough in a world today of people who are seeking for glory and power and arrogance and want uh, just me, a selfish world we live in. For us to be able to exist in that world and to be able to portray that image is pretty tough at times because we have uh, uh, not a lot of uh, people are sensitive to that and they don't care. But I don't care what they think. I want to be like Christ, right? Amen. And so being like Christ, we've got him within us. He enables us to do this. And the reason we don't change is the reason we don't probably is, a, is our desire to change. And then the willingness to pursue him and walk in the spirit and be in his presence. As I talk about today, we're going to look at the power of words. When you become a Christian and the, and the presence of God is within you and you feel that you have these gifts of the Spirit and, the, and you have the fruit of the Spirit, all of this package is in me. It's pretty exciting to have his presence in me. But one of the things that is, uh, really indicates and really starts to really show what's going on is when I start doing things, and then I start saying things. The moment I open my mouth and start saying words, it really starts exposing to everyone and those around us what's really on the inside, the words you use. There's nothing more powerful than words. You and I have been given the ability to speak words and to say things. That's something that God had given us when he created us, as we speak. And as you speak words, this is, it's an amazing demonstration of what's on the inside. Matthew 12, 34, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, the religious leaders, who were the guys that were all the spiritual guys of the time. And you would think that of, of, of people who would really want to speak uh, and and uh, be uh, sensitive to what they were saying. You, you would think it'd be the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but as the scriptures say, it says, you brood of vipers, Jesus said, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And, and that statement there is, see, here's what happens. What's in my heart comes out in words. So when you speak, you're speaking from your heart, and the things you say come from your heart. If you if you know, and, and that's so powerful. Then it says, the good person out of the good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. Now, come on, is that true? Is that really true? When we get to the judgment, will we have to give an account for every careless word we speak? Well, I don't know. 
May, maybe. But I thought when I become a Christian, I could say whatever I wanted to say. No. As a matter of fact, when you become a Christian now, really is a time when you have to begin to be careful and you have to look at what you are saying. Now the world, you know, you, you know what they're going to say. The world system and the people that don't know the Lord, they're hard, out of their heart. They're going to say things that are going to hurt people. They're going to, they're going to say things that, uh, that are, are, are extremely harmful. But that's the world system. But here I am, filled with the Spirit of God. And, that, and now I've got, a, I've, got an indi- I've got something that warns me and says, I will be held accountable for every careless word that I speak. By your, it says in verse 37, by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. So is that when I stand before God and people say, you know, what are you going to say? I got, one guy asked me at Valley Hope, what will I say to God when I stand before him? And, I, and, and, and the, the record of what we say will be kept. The heart produces according to its condition. The best test is the words that a person speaks. You know, you know, because I can tell you, you know, I'm spiritual, I'm Christian, I'm filled with the Spirit, I got all this. When you ever meet somebody like that, you know, it's, I'm a Christian, I got, but my lands, when they start talking, the words that come out, sometimes it's profanity. Sometimes it, 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 is, it is wrathful words. It, it's hateful words that come out. And you're going, what, what's, what's happening? What, what's, where's that come from? And you, and you know, I go back to this again, but in, a, in our country, in our political system, even in, a, in the, the leadership positions in our country, or even in our local communities, or even in our local churches and in our own families, right now, it, it is absolutely overwhelming to me to hear what people say. It, it, to hear what people say about people. And you can listen to this stuff about so long, but I, I don't know. We've got people, candidates running for offices again, and right away they jump on this thing and just listen to their words. They attack, they attack, they attack. And when President Biden fell going on to graduation, my land, did you read the words about, what ha- about people's thoughts about our president falling, an older man, which I relate to, it's easy to fall. And when he did, what people said, the words, destructive. I hope no Christian said those things. I hope that those words, we didn't speak words like that. Because you will be held accountable for the words you speak, and I will too. So God strongly affirms the seriousness of what we speak, and we will be give account for those careless words. God knows the power of words. And throughout the Bible addresses words that we should speak, even and it's in his character. Every, it says in the scripture, every man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the words he speaks, when God speaks, are perfect. The things he says is perfect. And when you read it, if you want to read some words that are perfect, read God's word. And so every, God knows the power of words. And so Jesus said when he was on earth, I don't say anything unless the Father tells me. He was so restricted on just talking. We'll just talk. Or somebody says something, you just, bam. You just start spilling out words. Sometimes I turn on the news channels, and they got these people sitting up there with suit and their ties and dressing all fancied up. And I don't know, maybe they went to a school about how to talk. I don't know what the, how they do that. But you all of a sudden, they just take off talking. And they just go, and just the words are just flying. 
And they're talking about dignitaries, they're talking about things, and the words are just pouring out. And I would like to say they were all good, but unfortunately, you don't hear a lot of good words coming from the news or different places anymore. Every word, and so God knows the power of them because he's the one that started it. By his word, all things were created. When he spoke, the light came. When he spoke, things created. So when God says something, it happens. It creates things. It makes things happen. Every word that proceeds. What we speak, each word should be considered in the same way they are powerful. We in Christ's image, our words will be like his if we have his presence in our hearts. Isn't that what we're saying, right? You're a Christian. His presence. The Holy Spirit's there. He's given the gifts to you. He's given the fruit of the Spirit. And so he's in my heart. And as he's in my heart and I'm reading his word, what am I going to say? And the more I'm in his presence and the closer I am to him, I'm going to start saying things that God would say. And the words I say would be like his character. And how many of you ever said anything that you regretted? How many ever said anything that you regretted? You know, if you say something and hurt something, somebody with words, they can forgive you, but for eternity they'll never forget until they die. The power of words are amazing. I've been praying about it and thinking about it. it it's, 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 so, it's so important, you guys. What's happening in our world today What's happening in our countries, what's happening with all the nations that say things against the other nations, and whether it's Putin or whether it's our president or whether it's in China's president, the words that they choose to say are so powerful as they stand up and begin to say them. And if we look back in history and Hitler and all those who have the ability to speak words of destruction, and how they would influence so many people. The power of words is probably beyond what we can comprehend. We have all experienced the power of words in our lives that began when we were born, even before we were born in our mother's womb. Children can hear, right? They can hear sounds and words, and they kind of know their mom's voice when, even when they're born. The words are penetrating into their lives even before we're born. As a child, the words begin to shape our lives and continue throughout all of our years of teenage years in adult life. We never cease to be influenced by words. And I've visited with a lot of young men and women and older people who grew up in the families that the words that they heard were so powerfully destructive. And they affected their lives for such a long time. I have a video I want to show you about words. You got it? You don't have a ton of things in common with God, but there is one thing. You speak. So does he. God spoke light into existence with his words. I wonder what you could speak into existence with your words this week. I wonder what kind of love you could speak into your marriage that feels like it's in neutral. I wonder what kind of courage you could speak into the heart of a child who's hurting. I wonder what kind of peace you could speak into your broken friendship, what kind of hope you could speak into your own weary soul. I want you to know that the most powerful words you're gonna speak this week is probably not gonna be on a stage or a conference call or closing the deal with a client that you want. The most powerful words you're gonna speak is probably just with one or two people listening, maybe zero. It's totally possible that the most powerful sentence you'll say this week is a thoughtful text message that you send to a friend who's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It's the apology email that you finally get the courage to send. It's 
that whispered prayers through tears in the middle of a dark night. Powerful words aren't just for preachers who stand behind pulpits. They're for parents who stand next to bunk beds and speak life to their kids. For spouses who share hopes and dreams during pillow talk and not criticism. For teenagers Stand up to bullies. Stand up for the uncool kids. Your tongue is so small, but so powerful. Your tongue is telling a story. some statements about the power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word is one of life's greatest mysteries. All you will ever be or accomplish hinges on how you choose to govern what comes out of your mouth. Powerful. Who you will become is determined by the words coming out of your mouth. Negative thoughts come to us all, but when you speak them out loud, you give them life. That's when they become a reality. Whatever you are constantly saying, you will become that. Be mindful when it comes to your words. A string of some that don't mean much to you may stick with someone else for a lifetime be careful with what your words with your words once they are said they can only be forgiven not forgotten words are free it's how you use them that will cost you but the human tongue is a is a beast that few can master it strains constantly to break out of its cage, and if it is not tamed, it will run wild and cause you grief. Handle them carefully, for words have more power than an atom bomb. They touch people's lives. We need to watch what we say. People destroy people with words. People destroy nations with words. They destroy families with words. Ministries are destroyed with words. What you are saying, you will be held accountable for. Every word. In James 3, verses 1 through 12, Familiar scripture. It says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. Now he starts off this comments about words by saying, If you want to be a pastor, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a, uh, someone that leads in the Christian ranks, this is something that's going to be tough for you because you will be held accountable more than anyone else once you make that commitment. As a pastor, I will be held super accountable for the words I speak. And you, whoever you are and what you do in ministry, you're putting yourself in a position now. It's you're going to be a little bit. Your requirements are different. There's no excuses for having those kind of words come out of your mouth at that level. And he's saying this, for we all stumble in many ways. You know, we have some difficulties. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to, to bridle his whole body. You know, he's saying the toughest battle you'll face in your body, you're going to have struggles in yourself, but the toughest, the toughest one you'll ever face 
is to be able to understand how to be able to bridle the things you say. That's your number. That's going to be it. Because once you master that, he's the one that says, once you master this, then it seems like everything else in your life has this control. Because you've learned this concept of controlling. One of the hardest things that people can ever control is what you say. And if you've mastered that, he's saying that anything else is whole body also able to bridle. Verse 3, if we put bits in the mouths of horses so they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. They are so large and driven by strong winds. They are guided by a very small rudder. Wherever the will of the pilot directs, so also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among us, our members staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. My way, that's serious stuff. And can it happen? Absolutely. It can happen. You can set on fire the course of life by the things you say. And you can see it. And I've seen it in families. I've seen it in personally in my life. And just the things that you say and the things that the words that come out of your mouth can, has the capability of such much, so much destruction. So much destruction. And you and I seldom are challenged with the statement of we have to control. We have to bring into control the things we say. The things that have been said to you, it said to you in the past as you grew up, and I and people, and I, it just amazes me how people can write and they're 35, 40 years old, and I'll say anything happened in your childhood that you can remember that was touching or that, that was that was. Uh, that would affected your life, and they'll sit there and they'll put down things. It's like, I was told, and this guy says, I hate my father. I hate him. I will never love him. He told me, and he said these things to me, and this is a young man. And he said, he said these things to me, and I will never forgive him for saying that to me. He said, I was worthless, piece of junk. He said, I'll never forget that. And you go, wow. And you hang on. And that stuff and those words have killed and destroyed and affected your life. It's influenced your life. And it's always in. And you know, and I want to tell you something. I thank God for healing. I thank God that when you and I, when we come to know the Lord, He heals us in our past. He heals the wounds that we have. When we were told we were nothing, and we read and we hear what God says, and God says, no, no, no. I didn't tell you that. I told you that I love you, and I have a purpose for your life, and I want you to in my life, and, I, and you're a, my child, and I will never leave you, forsake you, and you're the greatest thing that ever been created. You are a human that I have created in my likeness. And so I listen to his words. And I begin to heal. And as he says this, uh, he goes on to say, And set on fire by, for every kind of beast and bird or reptile to see a creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is restless, evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the mouth, same mouth come blessings and cursing. My brothers, these things have not, should not be. Does a spring pour forth the same opening, both fresh water and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. And I think back when James wrote this, everybody, people have never changed. James wrote this to people in the church. He was a, James is a brother, a half brother of Jesus. And we never have people problem with words back then. But we take these words that he has spoken 
And as we take these words, we begin to understand the power of them. And so as I understand the power of them, I and myself get a hold of myself and I begin to uh, check the things that I say and I begin to check my heart and say, what's going on within me? And as you do that in your life and as you listen and as you understand about the words you speak, it comes out of a heart. And a heart that's a pure heart will speak pure words. It is probably our most powerful member of our body and has the ability to bless and bring life. We have the ability to speak words that bless and that create life in people. As the Holy Spirit's within us, as we speak life, you put life into people by your words. As you share about the Lord, as you share about what God has said in God's words, and then you put life into them, and then you, you share the blessings, and you are that person that your words, every word, and the way you do it is 2 Corinthians talks about you have to bring every thought into captivity and you need to work. I need to work on this and we need to be aware of it every day. And as I invite the Lord's presence to be with me through the day, one of the things that knows on my mind is what should I say? Don't you think you ought to consider that? What should I say? And when I've, I've, I've tell you what, I've had people say things to me, and they, I tell you, they call me names, they've done stuff. I have people chew me, they're going to sue me. And in that, well, so what am I going to say? What will I say? Always a choice. And I believe as I pray, Lord, before you even speak, don't just. And then somebody sets up, what am I going to say? I got a guy called me up over a house deal. He said, lived up down there. He said, you guys cheated me out of all this deal. I'm coming down there. I'm going to kick you or blank and blank and all this stuff. I'm coming. So I said, okay. What am I going to say? Now, I lay blocks and did construction. I could took him out pretty good. I felt pretty confident about that. But then it's like the Lord said, no, nah, just don't go that route. I said, Lord, help me to know what to say. The doorbell rang, and as I opened the door, whoom, he came in there. What would you say? Hamana, 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 like old Ralph Cramden. I said, hi, Bruce. What you got, man? And that soft response, he just, he'd been drinking. He just stopped. Oh, uh, I said, man, we got a problem, man. We can get through this deal, you know. Whatever it is, you know, we can figure this out. If it's wrong, man, we'll make it right. And he just melted. And he said, okay. Well, he said it really wasn't that big of a deal, I guess. <laughs> but boy, we could have made it a big deal, couldn't we? But just asking the Lord for strength every day and what you say. And another thing is bring your thoughts into captivity and help you understand before you speak the, 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 the power of it. Before you speak the power of it. And sometimes you don't even have to speak. There's a time to speak and there's a time to be silent. There's a time when you don't have to say anything. There's a time to remain quiet. But then there's a time to speak. And whatever you speak, the Bible, nowhere does Jesus say in here that you can get nasty and argue and you can get mean about it. You can speak the truth in love. You can speak the truth and still love. It don't have to be mean. It doesn't have to be harsh words. It can be the truth in love as you speak. And as you do that, God begins to help you understand. We know the power of words. 
No matter our position and spiritual background, our heritage, our knowledge, our wisdom, our gifts, and our identity, whether we have all nine gifts and I can cast out demons, I can do everything. And I tell you, I grew up in church and I know that I've been around some people that, that were so, so beautifully filled with the Spirit. And, I, and you couldn't, they wouldn't say a bad thing. They, 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 they wouldn't. They were always so complimentary and so loving. Even when I knew I wasn't doing very good, they'd say, Jimmy, man, we just, you're a great guy. You're just a good boy. I appreciate you, and you're going to do great in life. You know that? God's got something great for you. And we love you, man. We just love you. And whatever, you know, and just speaking those words. And most of us can remember somebody in your life that spoke those kind of words into your life. And you'll never forget them. Words of confidence and saying, you know, you're going to make it. You can do this. And even, even the, with the words that Joe saying, uh, you, know, you know, hang on and stay in there. And other people are saying things of giving up and stuff. And especially in the, in, in the, as you uh, have a family within your own family, speaking those words speaking the words of life into children. You know, I see those little guys in that video. And I see some of the little guys that come on Wednesday night. And some of them come from home to just scream at them all the time. Some of them they tell them they ain't going to amount to nothing. But they come out to a group and someone tells them, Buddy, you're great. You don't think they like that? It builds them. Our ministry and the gift teams that we use, the gifts we use, are produced through our words. You know, it's not like we got this superpower you just drip to people, but God anoints you and you speak. And the things you speak and the truth you speak become powerful. Mature Christians keep their tongues under control by relying on the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit and by taking every thought into captivity to obey Christ, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Yeah, I need help. I need help with my words. Sometimes I'll lay there at night and I think about something that's wrong and somebody's done something wrong. And I think about the Democrats out there, and I think about all those Republicans out there, and they're all bad mouthing the Democrats. And I get all worked up about things, and I go, I'm going to post something here. And you get fired out there. And as soon as you say it, you know, you go, man, they can't do that. So they, you, you pray for God's Spirit, who is in you. His fruit that's in you produces in your heart. And as you read the word, if you're not reading the word, it's going to be hard to speak the word. Amen. And you read it, even if you read a psalm, even if you read a psalm and, and, and the scriptures, as you go and you begin to speak, you begin to repeat God's words. And those words are life. And I had the opportunity to sit down with hundreds of people and going through the recovery and speak life. It's, no, no, no. You're not a piece of junk. You're not a loser. God loves you. Hallelujah. And you go, huh? Life. And that's what I want to be. And you and I as Christians pray. Both what we think and what we say should be pleasing to God. Learning the truth before we to think before we speak, walking daily in his presence. Psalms 19, 14. Here's a good one. Put this on your refrigerator. You know, put that up there. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. My rock, my redeemer. Hallelujah. Every morning. Lord, may the words that I say be acceptable in your sight. That comes from my heart. And in my heart. Because when your heart becomes hard, when your heart becomes angry, when your heart becomes upset and everything, hang on. The words that are going to come out are not going to be good. 
but when I stay close to him and I walk in his spirit, the greatest thing, there's more power in this than there is in your ability to open blind eyes in some miracle. Your words have more influence on people than anything else. Amen. And what you say. I encourage you, no matter what's happened in your past, I encourage you, if you've been hurt by words in your past, it's time to let it go. It's time to say, Lord, I can't carry this anymore. I know what you said about me. I won't believe a lie. I'm not going to buy into this anymore. I ask you, Lord, to help me let this go and forgive them. Hallelujah. Forgive the person that said the words. And as you forgive them and let them go, you'll be free. And then become that person. And I really, I really try. It gets tough at times, but I really try to say the right things. There's a lot of things I would like to say. In my old human spirit, sometimes I'd like to lay a guy out like a cheap suit, right? I mean, you just want to say it. But in my spirit, it goes, nah. That's not the way to do it, right? And so, as you pray those prayers, Colossians 4, 6 says, we done? Thanks, Mark. I said, saying some good words, you know. So. Reminded me, it's time to go. It's 12.02. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. That means pleasant, encouraging, kind, and gracious. Worthy of being identified with Christ. So that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Let your words be gracious. They're powerful. You know, words in a car, and I've said it before, at times when I'm struggling, times when you're hurting, it's not all about just me. But be sensitive, okay, to somebody. Did I say something? Huh? A cheap suit? You ever hear that one before? <laughs> I'm speaking words, all right? You got this deal. But, but uh, don't let that happen. But words of life, all right? And I don't even know where I was at. I was leading to something pretty good right there. <laughs> Those must be time to shut it down. But anyway, we, we, we want to leave this place and it, wherever I go and whatever, whatever crowd you're in, whatever people you meet, find something gracious to say, all right? Amen. Touch people's lives. You say, boy, I've got a pretty tough nature, but God can help you with that, all right? Amen? All right, well, let's sing this song that Mark's plan. Words of life. Did you got it up there? <clears throat> Stand together with me. <clears throat> Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life. Faith and duty, wonderful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Pray that you'll have a great week and uh, enjoy the presence of the Lord in your life this week. 
and just touch somebody's life, okay? Through a call, text, card, or doing something, but speak some life into people's lives. Amen. Mick, you want to close? Amen. Lord bless you. Thanks for watching on the face or on YouTube and Lord bless you.